What about Santa? Santa. What's happening? Were we hit? No, the proximity alarm didn't go off. This is something different. Shandy? We don't have a lot of time. Claus is coming. What? Claus, a warlord from my time, your future. By the time we learned about him, it was too late. He was too powerful. The only chance we had to stop him was, was to watch Jail Tactics Devlog. Oh, wait. If you could go back in time. Why didn't you get us to watch Jail Tactics Devlog even earlier? Isn't that a little more important? You don't get it. This isn't about Earth. Come midnight, Christmas Day, Santa Claus is coming to town, and unless we stop him, he is going to put the universe on the naughty list. And trust me, you don't want to be on the naughty list. Sorry I asked. Welcome to another Jail Tactics devlog. So in this episode, I'll be showing you the 3D work that I've been adding to the game. This problem really came up pretty early in development, that if I'm moving the camera around, like during battle, I had to deal with the fact that the sprites are flat. There are a few solutions to this. First, I could do what's called billboarding, where you make the sprite face directly to the camera at all times. And I am, of course, already doing this to adjust for the fact that the camera is on a slight angle already, as I explained in earlier devlogs. But that's only a static angle change. If I am going to also adjust them for any other angles that the camera may move, like, say, during battle, I'll have to make this more dynamic. Now, I really like this for small things that aren't very thick like the smaller characters. As long as I don't twist the camera too much, it actually looks pretty good in my mind. But with the thicker objects, it looks real dumb. Another solution would be to draw sides of all the sprites. You would only really need to draw one side and then you could mirror it on the other. So if the camera angle ever goes too far in any one direction, you can change to the side view. There are some games that have done this and it looks really cool. Uh, I'm thinking is doing this for maybe the bigger enemies, the ones that take up more than one square. This will make it so that the more complicated enemy designs can be done in pure pixel art. But for the simpler things like buildings, we can use solution three. 3D objects. So since I converted my sprites into 3D objects already so that I could use the 3D lightings and shadows, there is nothing really stopping me from dropping 3D models in and piggybacking off the light setup. This of course was a huge undertaking on my part though. I don't have a lot of experience with 3D in Unity so I had to learn quite a bit of the 3D sides of things. I also had to find or make some models. I wanted to see how hard it would be to actually make a 3D model so I cracked open Blender and started doing the thing. I found a tutorial that was very detailed and walked you through making a donut by the Blender Guru. If you're interested, I'll have a link below. He is a fantastic teacher. After making my roommate crave donuts for two days, I went on to making something that fit more with the pixel art aesthetic. That's when I came across Mort Mort's vid on making pixel art materials or even linking a sprite to Blender, where I made this silly sign as a test run. And I still use this sign, but honestly, it's thin enough that I could billboard the sprites, which would look probably better. So the first building in the game is this shipping container. Using all the wonderful knowledge that I've been gaining, I made a rectangle. It even has very basic pixel art skin, but with the magic of lighting and shadows, I'm actually really happy with how it looks in the game. It only took me like an hour to make. Of course, there was one major hiccup. When you look through the angled camera, it's not rotated properly. Since this whole world is tilted 30 degrees, the building was on a different angle to everything else. Since I was hot off the heels of learning all those cool new shader graph effects, I knew that it had positional changing power. So I set out to figure out how to warp this thing into looking good. And wouldn't you know it, there was a tutorial for this incredibly niche problem I was having. I can't stress what an oddly perfect tutorial for my incredibly unique situation this was. I mean, there is not a lot of 2.5D Unity stuff out there. I think I've watched everything that's on YouTube for it. But one of them was this exact problem. I love it. It was a tutorial by Notslot, and thank you so much, Notslot. You saved me tons of time. I do have to ask, though. Are you married to that name? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, it's great. I know I'm just throwing tutorials at you, but I want to make sure that if anybody wants to make a similar style game, they know where to look. 
I think this style of game could look so incredible if, you know, if you were an actual artist. In this tutorial, he shows you how to split the position into its X, Y, and Z positions, add the Y and Z together, and then give that to the new Z coordinates. This will add a perfect 45 degrees angle to the object on the Z axis, which works great if your camera angle is 45. Mine is 30, so I actually needed to adjust that a bit, which simply means I need to multiply either the Y or the Z before adding them together. Now I have a variable that will change the angle to whatever I want, and I just feed it in. Now the only thing left to do is to revert the skew when the camera angle changes. Otherwise, you'll see this skewing magic, and it will be immersive breaking catastrophe! So, let's fix that. It's already a visible variable, so this should be a fairly simple process of kind of like billboarding that skew number as the camera changes. Two days later. Okay, so a few snags, but I really dove into some interesting math problems, so not a total waste of time. So the problem was that there was no real connection between the rotation amount that the camera was doing, which was going from 0 to 25 degrees in the Y axis, and the skew amount that I needed, which was 0 0.7, then sitting idle, and 0 when the camera was fully twisted. So this is not normally a big deal, just find the normalized value of the camera angle by taking the current angle and dividing it by its max angle and use like a percentage off the skew. Of course, I wanted the max angle to be dynamic just in case I changed that 25 degrees in future, so I had to set the destination variable in the camera script. Then of course you have to reverse the process when the camera comes the other way, so you have to flip all your calculations. Then it dawned on me that the camera rotating to the left, it was not going from 0 to 25 degrees, but 0 to 335 degrees. So I had to make a calculation to find the signed angle of that degree. Suffice it to say, never think anything is going to be easy. But with that done, 3D is nicely nestled in my project, waiting for another crazy harebrained scheme that I can think of next. So let's do a quick tip with chillin'. I think for the holidays, we want to talk about Unity's presence. That's right, Unity's gift to you is this little button up here in the corner. What it does is automatically set up all the settings for an asset. So in my project, I import tons of sprite sheets. The characters, the crafting stations, the moving backgrounds. These all require me to import, then change them to sprites, multiple, 16 pixels per unit, full rec, point no filter, and turn off compression. But instead of pressing all of those buttons, you can come up here in the presence and hit save and boom, you have all those buttons set up. You can even set this setting up as your default in the project settings and you don't have to even press any buttons ever again. All right, time for community spotlight. So this time we're checking out Aaron Wizard. I love his tagline of I want to make games that can be airbrushed onto the sides of vans. And that 90s fantasy box art style is what you'll be seeing in your feed if you follow him on Twitter as he finds cool new artists to show off. His game, Mightiest Steel, is also free to play on Itch if you want to go try this tactical turn-based RPG. And that's it for me. I know this one took a little longer to come out, but uh, you know, life kind of got in the way a little and I may have to get a job soon, so it may continue to take a little longer. But I promise to continue to spend all my free time working on the Wasteland Warden, which just got its lighting update along with a bunch of bug fixes. So now is better than ever if you want to go give her a try. Also, like, subscribe. Tell me how 2D my shipping container looks in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.